DDR5 prices are slowly going down and now 64GB kits start to become accessible, but not all. In this video I'm gonna have a look at an affordable 64GB kit. This is the Viper Venom 64GB C30-6400 DDR5 kit and is one of the most affordable kits out there. I'll put it to the test and check its tweaking capabilities using a 9800X3D, so stay tuned. The model in hand doesn't come with RGB and when it comes to height, it has a normal profile as opposed to lower profile ones like the one that I have from Corsair. This may cause compatibility issues with some air coolers and PC cases as lifting the front CPU cooler fan may be needed. The memory used is from Hynix, but I'm not sure if it's A or M die. Not even Hardware Info 64 can detect that. This memory kit comes with a 6000C30 XMP profile, a 6200C40, which in my opinion the primary timings are a bit loose, and a 6400C32 profile. I would argue that the 6000 and 6400 XMP profiles are ok, as a lot of memories out there use these timings. All profiles work on my motherboard, which is an Asus X670E motherboard. I didn't encounter any compatibility issues with any of the profiles. I must confess that I have the latest BIOS version installed, at least at the time of testing. These are the timings of the XMP profile of the kit reported by Zen Timings. The 6200 was used with an Infinity Fabric set to 2067 while the 6400 had 2133. Now let's have a look at the performance difference between the XMP profiles and see which is actually the best performing one. At 1080p in Counter Strike 2 the 6000C30 profile had a small advantage of around 5 FPS while the other two are basically tied. It seems that this game prefers tighter timings over fast Infinity Fabric speed, at least at 1080p. Increasing the resolution to 1440p, the gap between these three profiles shrinks, and that's due to the fact that the GPU starts to become the limiting factor here. In Marvel Rivals at 1080p, the 6200 C40 performs the worst, averaging around 10 FPS less as opposed to the other two. In this game it seems that having better timings helps as the other two XMP profiles have better timings. Moving to 1440p, the 6000C30 profile is the best performing one. It seems that having the lowest timings helps in this game, at least when increasing the resolution. Civilization 6 results are odd. The CPU is the bottleneck here in every resolution and at 1080p the difference between all three profiles is small, I would say within margin of error. Even when increasing the resolution to 1440p there is still a CPU bottleneck, but the 6400C32 paired with the Infinity Fabric set to 2133 seems to stand out, delivering on average 5 FPS more than the second best performing XMP profile. In games where we are GPU bound because of high settings, like Alan Wake 2 for example, even at 1080p there is no difference between the XMP profiles. The same applies to 1440p. And these are the results in a chart at 1080p. If needed, pause the video. Overall, the 6000C30 profile performed the best closely followed by the 6400C32 with the Infinity Fabric set to 2133. Now, the 1440p chart. As we saw in the 1080p chart, the 6000C30 overall performs the best. Now, let's tune this kit and see how much performance can we extract. I attempted to lower the primary timing of the 6000C30 profile, but I was not able to find a stable setting for C28. I'm a bit disappointed to be honest, as I was expecting to be able to find stable C28 primary timings with the voltage set to 1.4. As it turns out, I was able to lower a bit the primary timings, but not by much. When it comes to the 6200C40 profile, I was not able to drop it to C30, it was not stable. The primary timings that are stable, at least for me, are these ones. I tuned a bit the secondary timings, but this is still work in progress. 
6400 C32 paired with Infinity Fabric set to 2133 was a pain. I was not able to find stable better timings. Maybe I need to do minimal adjustments, but then again, what is the point? This is why you will not see any tweak profile in the following chart. The two tweaked profiles are the, the second and fourth bar from top to bottom per game. So, Tweaking a bit the primary timings helps the most the 6200 profile to catch the others, and delivering a small victory in CS2 if 3 FPS more can be called a victory. At 1440p, the 6200 tweak profile with the Infinity Fabric set to 2067 seems to deliver better 1% low values. This can be observed in Marvel Rivals in a small extent and in CS2 where the gains are substantial. I tested the finals as well with this tweaked profile and it seemed that the 6200 C32 and the Infinity Fabric set to 2067 performs better when compared to the 6000 C30, but that is a small advantage of 8 FPS on average. Now, what are my thoughts about this kit? In my opinion, it is okay. It has good XMP profiles that work well on AMD systems and I suppose those will work as well on Intel CPUs. There is no RGB and the price is good, often it can be found for the same price of a Corsair 48GB kit. If you are looking for a 64GB kit and don't want to waste time on tweaking timings, this is a good kit as it's often cheap. I would argue that this will be ok for the majority of the gamers out there, just install the kit, set the XMP profile in BIOS and never look back. I would argue that the best profile is the 6000 C30, at least for X3D CPUs, while for non-X3D CPUs I would go with the 6400 C32 and the Infinity Fabric set to 2133. If you increase the Infinity Fabric, make sure to do proper memory stress testing. If you are one that tries to squeeze every drop of performance from your PC components, this is not the kit for you. It will not be able to deliver lower primary timings when compared to other more expensive kits out there. You will probably find better ones, but be prepared to pay the price difference and the performance difference may be minimal at best. I assume that I will be able to squeeze a bit more performance out of this kit. I just need to spend more time in fine tuning the secondary timings as it seems I have the primary timings all sorted out. It is worth the time spent to test? I would argue that it's not, as the performance gains will be marginal at best. With that said, would I go for a 64GB kit for gaming? I would say that 32GB is more than enough right now, or for the next couple of years. There is no need to spend extra on 64GB kits. I think that is better to invest the difference in a faster GPU or a higher capacity SSD. And that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below and let me know what memory capacity is on your gaming rig. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.